Welcome everybody, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to Lador Vador's Oneg Shabbat, our new title, Zoom and Schmooze with Lador Vador. It is May 15, 2020, I'm Sharon Leibovitz, and welcome. With that, I would like to first thank, real quickly, our sponsor, who sponsored our Shabbat celebration, Barry Siegel and his law practice. A big round of applause for Barry. Thank you very, very much, Barry. Without any further ado, I'm gonna unmute Rose and I'm gonna have her sing Kine Matov. Thank you, Rose. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to introduce Rabbi Barry Silver, if he could speak on behalf of Siegel Law Group. Rabbi, where are you? Hold on. Got to find him. Okay. Unmute you. Okay. Hey, thanks for unmuting me. I really appreciate it. It's uh, <laughs> great to be with all of you. This is a very historic occasion. All right. This congregation started 20 some odd years ago with the father, my dad, the son, me, and the musical spirit, my mom. Later on, we started to do, many years later, started to do Zoom Shabbat celebrations in relatively recent history. But tonight, you are on the line when history is being made. For the first time in the history of Lador Vador, on Zoom, we have a sponsor. Now, Lador Vador means generation and generation. And you'll notice we have two generations of silvers. We have my brother, Dan, and his daughter, Rachel, are both on the line together. So that's Lador Vador. Now we also have a sponsor for the first time. This is opening up huge possibilities because as the word spreads about our services, the more people that listen, then the more sponsors would wanna join with us. Tonight, we have a very special sponsor. I'm gonna tell you just very briefly, who he is. Long time ago, back when I looked pretty much the way Dan's t-shirt is. Can you show him your t-shirt? Yeah, when I, when I looked like that, like that long ago, mm. I hired a secretary whose name was Shireen. And Shireen worked for me for years and then left the area. Didn't hear from her again. She finally came back and called me like 20 years later and said, I'm back. Oh, in between, I performed a wedding ceremony too. Okay. Anyway, she says, I'm back and I'm working for this attorney and he's really cool. He's like a really good guy. He's interested in Judaism and he's smart. He's not just like a typical attorney just doing law stuff. He's, he's interested in other issues. So I met with him for lunch and we we're talking about what's going on in the news, about Jewish philosophy and, and all types of stuff. And I thought, this guy is cool. I want to work with him. He does estate planning. Now, let me just tell everybody here, I'm an attorney. I do a little estate work, not much, but I do know one thing about wills. Where there's a will, there's a long lost relative. No, that's not, okay. So anyway, everybody needs to have an updated Florida will, but not everybody knows who to go to to do it. We're Lador Vador, generation, generation. If you wanna leave one generation to the next and do it properly and make sure that everything passes correctly. You need a Florida will. You need someone who knows what they're doing. And Barry Siegel is on the line now. He is very good. That's all they do is estates and wills. And uh, I, he advertised on our Shabbat celebration a little bit. You'll see a little thing there. He has a little thing that you can use to try to get everything in order. And uh, we'll be working with him. He's our sponsor for tonight and uh, for a little uh, for this month. I really thank him for being the first sponsor there. And I wanted to ask Barry to share a few words with us. Thank you, Rabbi Barry. Am I on? Can everyone hear me? Yep. 
Yep. Okay, great. All right. First of all, uh, thank you very much for having me. Apparently, this is a historical situation, having uh, being your first sponsor for the, uh, the Zoom and Schmooze. And uh, so anyway, thank you for the honor of, of being the first sponsor. Um, as as uh, the rabbi had mentioned, uh, the name of the congregation, Lador Vador, means generation to generation. And there's such a connection between uh, the name of your congregation and what it stands for and what we do in our law firm and what we stand for, because estate planning is really uh, planning from generation to generation. And during the time that we do this planning, we're not just planning passing on assets. While that's very important, we wanna make sure we pass on the assets in the proper way. When, when Rabbi Barry was saying, where there's a will, there's, well, really when there's a will, there's a probate, and probate is what we wanna avoid. So there's planning that can be done to avoid probate, and there's so many things, and I'm not gonna get into all of that right now. There's so many things that can be done, really to pass on the other things that are important to our loved ones, the things that where we're not passing on a hassle, a problem, uh, any of those things. We're passing on our love by the fact that we are planning ahead. We're not making life difficult down the road if we lose our capacity where we have our wishes known by our loved ones and they can go ahead and do what they need to do and uh, everything's planned out and that's really what we're doing. We're, we're passing on not only our financial assets, our, our love, our wisdom, and, and everything else. So, uh, that's that's really what we do at the Siegel Law Group, and uh, you know during these difficult times, especially uh, with what's going on, it's always a better idea to plan ahead. We never know what tomorrow brings, even when we're not in a pandemic. We never know what tomorrow brings, but during this pandemic, it's always a good idea to make sure, even if we've done this kind of planning in the past, if we've done a, a will or a power of attorney many years ago. It's always a great idea to dust it off and have it reviewed to make sure we have what we think we have and sometimes things change in our lives and we need to make sure that our planning is going to work for the situation we're in uh, today and down the road and have a plan to make it work for the time we need it so thank you very much for having uh, myself and uh, my law firm the Siegel Law Group and, uh, and, and of course Shireen who uh, uh, Rabbi Barry had mentioned uh, uh, set this up with Rabbi Barry and and I, I thank them and it's a real honor again to be your first sponsor for this and uh, thank you very much and uh, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you Barry. I just want to mention that Shireen has a tough time because she was connecting the two of us together and it's, not, it's almost like she's suffering a disease Barry Barry. She, she doesn't know who to who to refer to as Barry so she calls me Rabbi and calls him Barry. One other thing I want to say about Barry Siegel is that Many people think, I don't want to deal with wills. That's kind of lugubrious, you know? I, I don't want to deal with all that death and dying stuff. I, I don't want to deal with it. And what happens when you don't deal with it, it's always there. It's always lurking somewhere behind you and you always are kind of worried about it. When you deal with it, set it up and it's done, then you don't think about it anymore. And it's the same thing with anything in life. Once you deal with something difficult, you've got it and you don't have to think about it. If you don't, it's always there, so it's a good idea. Also, one other thing, we did Wizard of Oz tonight, so I have to show you my one of my favorite t-shirts, other than my Earth Day t-shirts and my tie-dyes. This is one of my favorite t-shirts. I don't know if you can, you can see this. <laughs> can, you, can you see what that says? Yep, if I only had a brain. And can you see who that is? Ah. The discerning eye will be able to find out who it is. I'll give you a hint. He did serve in the White House one day. Ah. Well, okay. Bush, anyway, Bush. let's. You got it. All right. <laughs> let's go. Let's turn it over to everybody else. <laughs> okay. Fix your camera, Barry, please. And I'm putting it on. So now um, everybody's muted, but. Um, who would like to speak? Just raise your hand, either really like this, or if you click on participants in the bottom, you'll get the white column over to the right. You can raise your hand at the bottom. It's got a little blue, raise your hand. And it is so great to see all of you. That is like the best. 
the best. And I know we've got families here. We've got we've got Rachel and her husband, and we've got Dan, and we've got um, I guess uh, the con son Larry is here. Welcome, welcome. So who would like to be the first to share some? Whether the news is good, whether it's bad, how are you? Whatever you would like to speak about, if you'd like to share some comments about Rabbi's uh, Shabbat celebration this evening, um, whatever you'd like to speak about. So Dan, I'm gonna unmute you, go ahead. Okay, um, on Facebook, I posted something on Mother's Day and I wanted to read to you what I posted, okay? Sure. So for me, for me to do that, I gotta go to this. Uh, here it is. I would like to wish all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day. This includes all the females who have no kids of their own, but are mothers to other children, like teachers, daycare workers, nurses, etc., or have cared for and nurtured a pet. I am very lucky that my mother is still going strong at 96. Always the optimist. She is an amazing person who raised five boys who all turned out to be loving, compassionate individuals. I'm most grateful that she always had nutritious food in the house and cooked a variety of dishes in a healthy manner. She never used salt. We never had fried food. There was never any soda or candy around. So we never got a taste for unhealthy fare. She also set a good example by being very active playing tennis and other sports well into her 80s. Thanks, Mom, for setting down a blueprint for how to live a long and happy life. That's it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, yeah, Dan. Thank you very much. That was beautiful. Yeah. OK, who's next? Who would like to? OK, Valerie. Welcome, Valerie. Valerie Hi, and Mishka. Hey, Valerie. Hi. <laughs> I just. Hi, I just want to tell everybody that yesterday we had a wonderful lecture uh, that many people attended that uh, Tzahi conducted about peace in Israel and the situation in, going on in the Middle East. And it was very, very informative and very, very positive. And a lot of people really, really enjoyed the information. They really did. So thank you very much for, for allowing my community to join you. Um, thank you, Valerie. Valerie. Sharon, can I just make a comment about that? Because I really thank Valerie for taking us to the next step. She introduced Lador Vador to her community, and we had many new people watching. That is the key to what's going to help our congregation grow. If you could let your community know and maybe have many of the people there tune into what we're doing, it would be awesome. In the conversation, I mentioned my belief and the belief of uh, progressive Jews that God did not give the land of Israel to the Jewish people. And it's really not a good idea to say that because then the Muslims who say, no, God gave it to us, it's just an argument over whose father in the sky gave them the land. And some of the people took offense at that. They were very concerned. So I've announced I'm going to have a debate on Wednesday night for a controversial issue series. Did God give the land of Israel to the Jewish people? If you know of anyone who would like to be my debating partner who will take up that cause, let me know. And if you know of anyone who would like to join in the discussion, it's going to be a fascinating one. It has everything to do with the future of Israel, whether God gave the land or if there's other better reasons to come up with. So I appreciate what Valerie did, and I hope to see you all on Wednesday at that important discussion. Hi, uh, Sharon, can you hear me? Uh, Sai, is that you? No, it's Frank. Oh, Frank. Hi, Frank. Frank. <laughs> hey, Frank. We're, we're way Frank. up. We're way up in the, uh, the, the northern woods here in Cincinnati area. And I just wanted to say hello to everybody. I miss, we, we both miss all of you. And I really enjoy seeing you again. And I love the uh, service that, that uh, you put together. It, you guys are doing a great job. And uh, I can't recruit anybody up here for you, but I do enjoy watching. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's great to hear your voice, and I'm glad that you're able to join us. It's so good to hear you. How's your it's wife wonderful. doing? Oh, Marcy, it's great. That's great, Marcy and Frank. How's Amadeus? 
Amadeus is doing well. He is almost uh, uh, used to the fact that he's, he's not living where he was before. He still makes mistakes and so do we, but uh, it'll take a while for all that to get worked out. Give him my regards. <laughs> he hears you. He's right here. <laughs> do, you have, do you have video, Frank and Marcy? We'll have it Monday. What I ordered, I don't have a camera for this computer, uh, and we ordered it. it, and it took okay. forever to come in. Right, because everybody's oh. buying them for Zoom. Yeah. Thank you. It's great to, oh my God, we miss you. Great to hear you. <laughs> great to, <laughs> great hear, to you, hear you. Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. Hi, guys. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. You did a great job as there. usual, Suzanne. Thanks, hon. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Emily, go. Go right ahead. I want to thank Rachel and her husband for having been on the Mother's Day thing because my grandson from Atlanta logged on with my daughter and he, her, his comment afterwards was, they're not all old people that, that were on there. So I wanted to thank you guys for being on Mother's <laughs> Day and then being on again now. Thanks. Wow, that's nice. Thanks. Okay, we got Harris. Go for it, Harris. Okay. My girlfriend, as you know, is a shiksa. She saw the service tonight and she thought it was sensational. So she's going to be watching the service every Friday night from now on. That's awesome. The pressure is on now. We got to do something to top this week. But that's great news. Thank you so much for having her watch with us. Thank yes. you for watching. That's great, Harris. That's great. Larry, do you want to say something? Larry? Sure. This is great. And one suggestion, Rabbi Barry, when you get back into the temple on a weekly yeah. basis, you should continue to do these Zoom uh, meetings every Friday night because now I feel like I'm actually at temple. And here in the Poconos, it's very difficult to feel like that. Wow. I think we're going to keep doing it right along. Thank you for the suggestion. I think it's a, this is great. This has opened up new possibilities. And uh, Thank you for making that great suggestion. Thanks, Thank you. Larry. Thanks for being there for your parents. That's great that you could come on and be part of the family here. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Carol and Jerry, mother and father yeah. of Larry, you want to say yeah. something? <laughs> sure. What, what the thought that, that left me after the service tonight was after this COVID is over, why can't we continue with the saving of the earth the way we've already started it? There's got to be some way to keep this from going back to where it was before. But we'll have to leave that up to the scientists. Well, actually, um, we have to leave it up to, uh, it's up to all of us, but also we need a spiritual awakening, which is totally lacking. We, we need, there's a scientist named Gus Speth who said he used to think that the most serious environmental problem was, was climate change or habitat loss or, or so many different things. But he said he realized the most important, the most significant problem is the attitude that people have towards the earth and thinking someone else is gonna make a difference. And to change that attitude requires a spiritual transformation. That's really, really what we need. And the spiritual religious community, I believe has completely failed. They have provided no moral leadership in this. And what we need to do is recognize that we can do without. We don't need all these things. We don't need to acquire and accumulate so many things. So as we go back into the economy and build it up again, let's see if we can do with less. And let's recognize that being in the home, being with our family, being with our friends, and, and things that are not material make a difference. And we, don't, we can't keep accumulating things, and we can't keep doubling our population every 20 years. We have to have family planning, and not expend so much and not leave such a footprint, not as just as individuals, but as a species. That's really what we need to do from this experience. Any more, Jerry? Is that, you're good? Okay, okay. Who else would like to speak? Okay, Andy. Actually, I wanna recognize Gloria. She's had her hand up a few times. I don't see Gloria. Where's Gloria at? Thank you. Okay, we have a, Gloria, we're having a problem with your audio. We're having a problem with your audio. Right here. <laughs> Listen, guys. I don't see Gloria. She has her phone on. Okay. 
Oh. Okay, try it now. Gloria, try it now. I don't know what to do about it. I'm on my computer. Okay, Gloria, what you should do is call in on one of the numbers, okay? And then it'll be better. Something's wrong with the audio from your computer right now. Is it any better? Nope. Nope. Can't hear it at all. Is this better? Nope. Can you hear me? We can barely, but it's all echoed. I'm so we really Okay, so call in on one of the numbers. Oh, wait Leave a it. Minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's a okay. Sorry. Uh oh. All right, so I'll I'll make a comment. Yeah. I love the, this is the best you've done yet, Rabbi, and and I think Can my you favorite hear me? part was the "Heal Us Now" oh. version of Amisha Bera. I love that. You know my question. You heard my question. That's a joke. Is who is that speaking right now? Please mute your please mute yourself because it's um reverberating. Okay. Oh, well. Okay. Sorry, Gloria. Okay. Who else would like to speak? Meryl and we've got Meryl and Pat and Stacy and um, we've got Maya. Maya, would you like to speak? Yes. Hi, Thank Maya. You. How are hey, you? Hey, Maya. Welcome. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. It's good to see you. Thank you. Part I'm, of the Silver family. <laughs> I'm one of the pieces and I, Mom and I were just watching the first half of your um, service for tonight, and it was so amazing. It was just incredible. I loved how you were bringing in, um, like, Wizard of Oz. Like, it was just so cool. And to hear you singing, Barry, and all the others singing, mm -hmm. it was just, it was awesome. I really look forward to watching the second half and watching more in the future. And I just, I felt so much like pride, like that's my uncle, sing it, say it. And um, what you're saying, yeah, just just right before about how we really need the spiritual awakening and we got to take care of the earth and it needs to start with religious communities um, so that we're really living into the values and this is the most important thing that we can live into. So thank you so much, Barry, and nice to see you all. You know, this is a this is a real thrill to see Maya on and my brother Dan and Rachel and Maya's dad, my brother Josh, they were raised without a TV. They were raised by getting by with less, with leaving a small footprint and thinking about what can we do to make this world better. And all of them turned out in wonderful ways. Each one of them contributing in, in different ways, but filled with idealism and trying to help this earth and the people on it and the animals on it. And what I do, I have to tell you, Ladorbador is generation to generation. We have mostly seniors. I'm, I'm talking to Maya. When I'm, when I'm doing that service, I'm addressing Maya. I'm addressing my nieces, my nephews, all of the younger generation. All the people who are generally turned off by religion. It's a complete waste of time and irrelevant because they're not dealing with what's real. I'm, I'm pitching the message to them so we can get the young people back. Because people think, hey, how are we gonna get young people? By making it relevant, we will. But we're also trying as hard as we can to incorporate the traditional and what makes Judaism meaningful to people who are seniors to bring everybody together. So there's some parts of it that appeal to the seniors and part to the young and, and part to the traditional and part to the less traditional. So I'm really thrilled to hear Maya say that, that she was reached by this because Andy's part of this, Andy Sussman and Rose and Sharon is a big part of it and Arnie. And uh, we're gonna keep doing it, we're gonna get better. And if you give us feedback, we'll get even better. But thank you very much for watching. Thank you. That's great. Thanks, Maya, for being part of this. Wendy. Hi, yes. Wendy. How are you? You're in the dark. We can't see I know you I'm going to leave myself in the dark because okay. I am. Uh, That's fine. That's fine. With a neck wrap on my head, on my neck. And I've had trouble getting the um, service on and off. Sharon knows that I've been trying to um, have my mother see parts of the service because it's so beautiful. And she was able to see a few minutes of it and really enjoyed it. But I've been spending so much time um, on the phone with Verizon, et cetera, trying to get it straightened out. And they 
screwed me up last night that today when your service was coming on, even though I started trying at 6.30, I couldn't get it and get it and get it. And then when uh, I uh, saw it was 8.30 and I wasn't done seeing the service, I figured, okay, let me go to the Zoom. And then as I started getting into the Zoom, I'm hearing all the singing and the talking from the other thing in the background. So um, I didn't start catching you until five minutes ago. But yes, Rabbi Barry, it was beautiful with the songs and everything. And I can't wait till I get this all straightened out because like I said, my mother got such pleasure and the um, friends I've gotten to have watch it are enjoying it so much. I'm looking forward to getting to go to temple when, because I haven't been before, um, getting to go to temple when uh, we are open again, so. Thanks a lot, Wendy. Thanks for thanks for joining Thank us. And uh, we don't have an edifice complex, so we don't have to be in a temple in order to get some uh, yeah. spiritual upliftment. But thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, Who else? Who else wants to share some thoughts? Thank you. Sai, you're on. You're not muted. Um, you're online, and and um, we've got Debbie, and we've got. Um, Gloria, I was going to recommend to you, I think she went to try to dial us in. I was going to recommend her to chat and I could read it, whatever she wanted to share. So if you're there, Gloria, just uh, type it into the chat window. But it is so nice to see everybody and be together. Um, it just, it's, it's just great. It's great. And I hope you all enjoyed. I mean, it sounds like everybody enjoyed the Wizard of Oz theme and the Shabbat and Rabbi Barry and Andy and, and Arnie and, and Rose. Uh, it just, it was a terrific Shabbat service and takes a lot of effort, a lot of teamwork, but um, we pull it off and, and we're gonna have an even better one each week, we hope, so. Um, now, now before so we go, I wanna piggyback on what my brother Dan said about Mother's Day, because my dad had a line about Mother's Day. M stands for the millions of things mothers do, O stands for the other things mothers do. T stands for the thousands of things mothers do. H stands for the hundreds of things mothers do. E stands for everything mothers do. And R stands for the rest of the things mothers do. And if you put all those letters together, what do you get? Slave. So don't you get any ideas. <laughs> so we, we give thanks to mothers who just want to be of service and to help. And we also give thanks to Jewish mothers who really raised their kids in a way to value certain ideals and to all mothers of all religions. We're so lucky that we were created in such a way that we have mothers and fathers that care for us. I, we, we could have been another species that our mothers might have eaten us, but instead they care for us. So we're very blessed. We will try to do better each time. Next week, next week is gonna be about hope. It's gonna be all about hope, but it's gonna be about hope distinguished from wishful thinking. Hope that's grounded in reality so that the hopes can come true. And Hatikva, the national anthem of Israel, means the hope. The whole service is going to be around hope, even during this pandemic, and hope for the future and how we can make those hopes and dreams come true. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Wednesday night, I'm going to debate whether God gave Israel to the Jewish people. I say no. It's a fantasy, and we have better reasons for wanting to be in Israel than that. It's going to be an interesting discussion, seven o'clock. I thank everyone for being here. It's really Hold great on. to see you. Hold on, we've got Carol Kahn wants to say something. All Go right. ahead, Carol. Hi, I just have to say you were, you were discussing mothers and referring to mothers. And when we lived in New York on Long Island, my daughter came home from school one day and she said, hi, mom, what's for dinner? And I said, I didn't make dinner. And she said, what do you mean? I said, I just didn't make my dinner. And she said, mom, you're the mother. You have to make dinner. Duh. <laughs> love, oh, wow. love it. Love it. That's great. <laughs> Take so, care, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Tuesday night, we're going to do chat with Rabbi. We're changing it from Friday afternoon at 2. We're changing it to Tuesday at 7 p.m. So on Tuesday at 7 p.m., we're going to have chat with Rabbi about Torah and more, whatever you want to ask. And that's a great little gathering. And Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we're going to have Rabbi's controversial issues about 
did God give Israel to the Jewish people, please let your friends and neighbors, family, everybody know, and hopefully we'll have as many or more than we had last night for our, for our uh, great discussion. And I think that'll be a very and, and interesting also, discussion. If you know any Orthodox rabbis or conservative rabbis who have some guts, and if they're willing to exchange views in a rational forum one-on-one -on -one with me, and if they want to argue that God gave the Jewish people the land of Israel, which is pretty much their belief, bring them in here. Tell them about me. They could be anywhere in the world. They could be in Toronto. I don't care. They could speak Spanish. I don't care. Bring them in. Because if we don't have that, there's going to be an empty chair here. It's just going to say empty chair. It's going to empty chair. It's going to say Orthodox rabbi. And I have to argue with an empty chair. As an attorney, I don't want to do that. Find me somebody, all right? Let's make it a great discussion. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for being here. Take care. Thank you, guys. Remember, there's everybody, no place big, like home. Big hugs, everybody. <laughs> Take care. Bye -bye. Stay safe. Shabbat shalom. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Shalom. 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 Shalom.